welcome to or back to my channel. Hey, I'm Ellen if you're new here. I'm very concerned about the lack of battery on my camera right now considering that I wanted to film this which is probably going to be a chunky video and then I'm going to the cute exhibition at the uh, at Somerset House which is a exhibition sponsored by Sanrio kind of half in celebration of the 50 year anniversary of Hello Kitty and half in celebration of all things cute so it's so friggin up my street I'm obviously going on opening day I'm so excited but definitely need to charge my camera and I'm filming this before work as well so it's dark outside but I've got the ring light on so fingers crossed we're doing okay lighting wise anyway you're not here for my rambling you're here to hear me talk about the movie well the styling of the movie poor things so i went to see poor things a few weeks ago um which is a movie that was directed by yergos i never know how to say his last name so i'm not even gonna bother i'm not gonna butcher it um my partner is greek so you feel like i'd be able to at least try and pronounce these names if he walks by or i hear him i might try and get him to help me but um yeah so I saw Poor Things a few weeks ago and the thing that like struck me about the movie and I knew it would was obviously the stunning visuals within the movie. It's very like um, that kind of like cyberpunk futuristic vibes where you're like not really sure what era it's set in because everyone's wearing hyped up Victorian clothes but then there's like floating trams. Visuals are just stunning. The outfits were just amazing and after seeing the movie I really wanted to talk about the fashion and the costume and the wardrobe in the movie and how I think that's going to affect um, or possibly have an impact on trends moving forward. So I've made a lot of notes on this and there'll be a lot of pictures flashing so you, you get in a lot, you'll get a lot of uh, imagery and stuff as well while I'm talking about these things and also there are going to be spoilers throughout this so if you haven't seen the movie and you are interested in seeing it and you don't want it to be spoiled for you um, then I would skip, I'll put like a sections list down below where I'm going to talk about the styling and then I'm going to talk about the trends. So if you just want to watch, uh, look at the trends bit, then I won't, I'll try not to mention any spoilers in that. But there will be like kind of spoilers now, not about like the main plot, um, but like elements within the film that I feel like are relevant. So if you don't want that spoiled for you, then I would definitely avoid this video or come back once you've, you've seen it. Anyway, the whole video will make more sense to you if you've seen the movie as well. Um... So yeah, I wanted to talk first about um, Poor Things as a movie in general. So it's a sci-fi period piece, is what it's called, about a Victorian woman who um, dies and then she's, she's pregnant with a baby and the baby's brain gets implanted into her body. So the grown-up looking Victorian woman is actually a, a toddler um, and it's about like her kind of coming of age story for lack of a better word I would say um, and the costume designer for it was Holly Wellington um, she did the costume design for Florence Pugh as Lady Macbeth and for Dakota Fanning in The Great as well um, so she is well known for doing these kind of like very stylistic period pieces so she was like the perfect costume designer for poor things and she's just completely nailed the styling not Dakota Fanning, Elle Fanning that's a younger sister um in the great so the brief that um Holly was given was that Yergos yeah, didn't want the movie to look either sci-fi or period so she was given this really sort of hard mix and I think she's absolutely nailed it of wanting it to be somewhere in between a sci-fi and a period piece in that you couldn't yeah like I said before you can't tell the period of the movie just by having the costumes in front of you um because they're kind of like a surrealist take on Victorian wardrobe and styling um in terms of how i've split talking about styling i've split it down into three main sections as i feel like there were three main moments of the movie or main phases of bella's life where she the main character is called bella baxter by the way that's emma stone's character i feel like i haven't mentioned that emma stone's character is called bella baxter she is the the woman who died who had her baby's brain implanted in her and it's her coming of age story so she has definitely three main kind of moments within the movie and the styling changes for each of these so so each of these stylings are all really centered around that theme of victorian silhouettes but kind of 
modernized with their fabric so there's a lot of like plastics and latexes and very very exaggerated silhouettes that are used to kind of modernize or even like hyper modernize the styling in the first phase of bella's life we obviously see her as an infant and you can tell that they've really played with that idea of her being like childlike because the outfits are very kind of playful and childlike there's lots of sort of like elaborate ruffles, baby doll dresses, lots of like poofy ruffled clothes, all really sort of... Oh, why are you bursting in here like that? She's got the zoomies, sort of like Victorian bloomers and nightgowns, and it's like, it's very like fun and childlike. Um, they wanted to play with the idea, Holly said in a, I think it was an article with Vogue that I read, that they wanted to play with the idea that Bella was like never fully dressed, like nobody had really like put her together. She's like a child, you know, like a child like wants to wear like half an outfit or take their clothes off and like that's, they played with that idea but she's like always kind of half done, that there's never any shoes on or it might just be a top and no bottom, the bottom's no top, that sort of thing. Like really playing with her not being put together and not being fully dressed in this initial part of the movie. And once in the second part of the movie, which I would say her second part of the styling is, Bella going on her sort of great adventure. So when she um, ends up like out in the world, in Lisbon, in Paris, where else does she go? I feel like Lisbon and Paris are like the big ones they talk about. This is very much like Victorian staples, but reimagined. So I would say that that really brings in the kind of Victorian silhouettes, but with these new fun and fresh fabrics. And also these like bursts of colour which are really sort of beautiful and exciting, this colour clashing, um, it's very much like kind of dopamine dressing-esque, like oh, I was watching this part and this was my favourite, definitely favourite outfit wise, it's very much in terms of like all the uh, women you see on Instagram dressing in like a dopamine dress way, Bella Baxter dopamine dressed her way through this section of the film, I would say it's absolutely beautiful. And again they wanted to play with the fact that Bella had maybe never been taught how to dress herself properly, so she's wearing pieces that like maybe don't look right together or she's wearing a top but missing the jacket that matches that top. It's very like very well well done, really cool looks within this segment. Like everything looks like almost slightly off i would say it's like yeah like things aren't put together properly but like it's very very fun this is um definitely like the second section of the film and then she really like not so much finds herself like you know in barbie when like barbie has that realization of what the real world is like i would say bella has that that realization of, of what reality is and what the real world is like and like learns more about like sex and everything like that and like relationships and just finds the real world for lack of a better word um and has this like almost like coming of age moment and this is i'd say would be part three of her outfits which is very like dark academia almost she starts to study philosophy she goes and works in the brothel and there's this very big mix between sort of dark academia and like lingerie i've actually in my notes put this as part three and part four but Let's go with, so let's go with the, she becomes a sex worker first, so let's talk about that. The iconic outfit from this moment has to be the condom coat. She wears this like latex floor length coat that is very much made to like represent a condom and this is literally just as she's figuring out um, that she can make money out of sex basically and she's wearing this very like fitting uh well fitting in terms of it fits the the moment in her brain and in the scene like long latex condom coat which fits over like one of her normal outfits and there's a lot of like outfit repeating within the movie as well so she'll come back wearing um like there's this like ruffle yellow thing that she wears throughout the whole time on the cruise and then in the brothel she's then wearing this ruffle yellow thing but over her lingerie and then when they move her into uh, working in the brothel they don't use kind of like normal overtly sexy colors which are like so like reds and blacks which i love it's more like kind of like neutral nude tones so really kind of representing hi strawberry representing bella and her like move into this like she wouldn't go from what she was wearing straight into wearing these very overtly sexy colors like she's still figuring out herself so she 
sticks to like mainly like neutral skin tones um like not the normal sort of overtly sexy colors and then then she moves into stage four where she starts to study philosophy and she almost goes into her university phase of her life let's say and then she moves into this real dark academia look i would say the this look this dark academia look is easily my favorite i think i've said quite a few of my favorites but i love i think this this look is amazing like it's really like she's figured out her styling she's figured out who she wants to be but like not quite like she's got the blazer dress thing but then she's forgot to put on trousers or a skirt which in if it was set in the Victorian time she obviously would um but that's still that playfulness of it like when is this set but also the playfulness of Bella like still not really knowing what she's doing in terms of her styling and not being like a hundred percent tick put together it's still a bit like odd like she is she's still figuring it out um and apparently the original jacket um is actually a carbon copy of a victorian one um but with like uh add like a, a few more a few trimmings taken off um and it's just really cool so yeah that is a bit of an overview on the actual styling throughout the movie and i've picked two trends i think will come into fruition in 2024 and that we're already seeing a little bit already but i think this movie will really push that forward and inspire a lot of looks that we'll see in 2024 even if it's a little bit subliminally um i firstly want to talk about the simon rocha x jpg show um jpg yeah jpg show jean paul gautier show um that premiered yesterday so wednesday i don't even know what the date is yesterday um and jean paul gautier i want to want to talk about the collection in general actually but i feel like a lot of it really fits with the styling and the look of um poor things um Jean-Paul Gaultier uh, obviously retired, I don't know, a few years ago and he's been bringing back um, young and upcoming designers to do collaborations with the house um, but also mixing the house style with their style and the most recent one was Simone Rocha who is a Irish designer but she's based out of London and what she's known for is her very like exaggerated silhouettes that have bows all over them basically. Simone Rocha's stuff is very like I like bows and utilitarian almost but she really really brought that through in her Jean Paul Gaultier collection and it is very like a lot of the themes are very similar to the themes that were in Poor Things it's all about um the whole collection was about restriction and release so in terms of the mo the theming within the movie Poor Things there's a lot of that restriction and release um motif theming playing throughout as well as there was in this collection it was absolutely beautiful it really um again had like lots of similarities to those sort of victorian um detailings that we see throughout poor things but with that sort of sci-fi um modernized elements uh jean paul gaultier as a house um are always playing with the idea of like kink and um like slightly taboo elements within their designs so like corseting popping out things and stuff and i think simon rocha really detailed that really kind of subtly but nicely within this collection and i feel like it really really fits with um some of the ideas and styling that's coming out of war things so yeah i just thought there was a nice parallel between those two and i wanted to kind of mention that within this video um so the first trend i went for i very much like it probably is two trends really i've gone for like um what did i actually call it in the end i think i i tried to give it a better name than this but i really just couldn't so i went for dun 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 exaggerated tailoring slash dark academia like we've seen the dark academia trend um over and over again repeatedly in the past 10 years or so i would say about 10 years ago 2014 and obviously there's a resurgence in 2014 trends dark academia was absolutely huge the little socks the chunky loafers the like oversized um shirts and blazers like that was huge alexa chung was uh like definitely like flying with that trend and i think we're going to definitely see a resurgence of that 
sort of styling coming back and what's great about this style is everybody's got these pieces in their wardrobe you just need to style them a little bit differently everyone's got the oversized blazer everybody's got the like little socks and the loafers um so everyone's got stuff in their wardrobe that they can use to recreate this trend and I, what i think will be slightly different about it is it will be that kind of very oversized silhouettes and tailoring and it will be on a little bit of a more futuristic side than maybe we've seen it before the other trend i think we'll see is like oversized what about if, let's go for what i've called this again oh colorful ruffles with a vintage feel so i think what we'll see from this and what i'm trying to say is kind of like that very vintage victorian styling but bought into the modern age with very very colorful very very oversized ruffles and pleating and detailing so like hardcore dopamine dressing but in a victorian or like edwardian type silhouette so maybe like more boning or tailoring um featured more like lace details but again with these ruffles and this bright color um all kind of pulled together i just think dopamine dressing is going to continue to be really big and it's only going to continue to grow um in stature as we kind of move on with our styling throughout the year and i think like big oversized ruffles are definitely something we're really gonna see ring true within that so yeah really fun i'm sure i've flashed some images over and i've made some really cute mood boards for this as well and um, so i'm hoping i'm showing those because otherwise i don't know when else i'm gonna show them um but yeah guys i'm sorry if that video was a little all over the place but i really really hope you enjoyed it and i got to the point in the end um it is obviously all the fashion weeks coming up and i think i've committed to my channel being about um fashion and trends and that sort of thing at least for the first part of this year so i'm definitely going to be it's copenhagen fashion week first i think it's copenhagen fashion week next week actually so um not next week but the week after this videos i'm going to talk all about my favorite looks and my favorite runway shows and stuff like that from copenhagen fashion week and then we will do all the other fashion weeks of course because i'm going to watch them anyway and i'm going to review them in my head so i may as well bring you that content so if that's the kind of thing you'd like to see then do remember to hit subscribe to stay updated for future videos um i upload at the moment every monday wednesday and friday and i've been really be really really good at doing it so if you could hang around and stick with me through this i would absolutely love that and support the fact that i'm uploading three times a week and driving myself completely mental that'd be amazing hope you enjoyed it bye guys